One of the most famous, or perhaps I should say infamous, uh, verses in Revelation concerns the number 666. It's a number that people have uh, traditionally understood to, to be associated with Satan and the power of the Antichrist, and to some extent that is correct. The number appears in Revelation chapter 13, where the writer of Revelation has uh, pictured a great beast uh, who represents a kind of tyrannical power that seeks to coerce people, uh, bring it under its control. That chapter, after portraying the beast with its tyrannical power, the chapter concludes by saying that no one is going to be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let anyone with understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a person, and its number is 666. Well, what does the number 666 represent? Um, as soon as one begins speculating by connecting this number with different uh, aspects of newspaper headlines, you might come up with any number of different options. For early readers of Revelation back in the first century, John is suggesting, intimating, that there's a certain procedure that you follow. First he says, calculate, and he uses a Greek word there that refers to a practice known as gematria. What gematria was, was a process of adding letters up to create a total. Every letter of the alphabet, whether the Greek alphabet or the Hebrew alphabet, had a numerical value. A equaled 1, B equaled 2, and so forth through the alphabet. Now, the way in which they used these numbers is that every word would, of course, have a numerical value. A word is made up of letters. Letters have numbers. Total it up. See what you get. Well, it's a kind of a riddle. It makes it fun to try and figure it out, and John assumes that his readers would have been able to do that. John has pictured a tyrannical beast who has blasphemous uh, names written on its heads. Sounds an awful, like, awful lot like the Roman emperors who had aspirations of uh, claiming divine titles for themselves. Talks about this political power persecuting the saints. Well, that's something that the Roman emperors did, and particularly the emperor Nero. It talks about a beast who was slain and yet came to life, life again. And that too sounds an awful lot like what people thought of when they thought of Nero. Nero was reputed to have died and yet some said that he continued to live on. If you add up the numerical values of the name Nero Caesar in Hebrew letters, you come up with the number 666. That's almost certainly what John's earliest readers would have thought. John includes this little riddle to say that in an emperor like Nero, who was notorious for his persecution of Christians, that's where you see evil's true face. He wasn't saying that Nero was going to come back again, but he says if you want to know what it looks like, take a look here. 666 will take you to a figure who was notorious for evil, opposition uh, to God, and a way in which you're invited to discern its character and presence in your own time. 